the Schneider Trophy was a sporting competition that allowed aerodynamic, structural and engine knowledge to be refined, allowing many of those who became great aeronautical designers to broaden their field of knowledge and their skills. Among these was one of the best Italian aeronautical designers, the engineer Mario Castoldi, also the designer of the Maquis 202 Folgor. Since the war in Spain, the Regia Aeronautica was strongly intent on regaining the distance that had been created with the aeronautical achievements of the Messerschmitt 109 and the Supermarine Spitfire. Its shortcomings concerned the motor sector, having first aimed at the radial engine which, however, had not yet obtained a reliable propeller with powers exceeding 1,000 horsepower. And then on the inline engine where the arrival of certification for a high-power propeller seemed imminent, reliable. The Regia Aeronautica had mainly bet on the Fiat 38 engine to be able to obtain an aeronautical project capable of competing with the other single-engine fighters with inline engines. Unfortunately Fiat communicated that the development time of the engine would have gone far beyond what was originally estimated. Therefore, General Pricolo, taking advantage of the negotiations that his predecessor had already started, aware of the timing to obtain a reliable aeronautical engine, having obtained the Daimler-Benz license at 601, preferred to move away from the national Fiat project to generate the subsequent rows of fighter aircraft on German engines that had now reached reliability. The Regia Aeronautica communicated to the main national manufacturers the obtaining of the license, and the forthcoming purchase of the first examples of the engine to be made available for the first generation fighter prototypes. As soon as McKee's authorization was obtained, engineer Mario Castaldi immediately set to work without waiting, with a completely private initiative. Realizing what would have been McKee 202, pivoting on the McKee 200 cell, adapted from a structural point of view to what were the stresses of the German engine. He obtained a machine that immediately proved to be reliable and with superlative performance. Right from the first flight in August 1940. So much so that he was able to quickly reconvert some of the production lines of the McKee MC-200 fighter to the new McKee MC-202 and build the first examples in record time. In any case, the conversion from the fighters produced until then, which were all with a radial engine, required a considerable effort to train both the old and new technicians in advanced technologies. With a large educational and technical investment, with the purchase and commissioning of a considerable mass of new machine tools and new processes, this production reconversion took almost a year and involved all the aircraft which restored the quality level of the Regia Aeronautica to that of the main belligerent air forces. In this way, qualitatively, the Regia Aeronautica reached the state of the art in 1942. The Maquis 202 was one of the aircraft that had allowed this qualitative leap. For speed, handling, performance, sturdiness, it was comparable and in some respects superior to its most important adversary, the Supermarine Spitfire. It was unequivocally superior to all others, such as the P-40 or the Hurricane. The Spitfire would then go further, for a few months with its Mark V, which on the armament side would introduce the more lethal 20mm cannons of the armament mounted on the McKee fighter. But still a few months later, even the Regia Aeronautica would have had its fighters with this armament, the stupendous three fighter models of the Evolutionary Series 5. A series that would have placed Italy once again at the apex of aeronautical technology. 
the real handicaps for the Regia Aeronautica and the Italian aeronautical industry were the reduced production volumes, which could not compete with those of nations such as Great Britain and above all the USA. They were the very limited availability of raw materials which did not allow to feed the lines of production in a congruous manner. It was the poor fuels that choked the potential of the engines. It was the poor capacity of the Italian schools, institutes, universities that could provide only a part of the technicians and specialists that would be needed nor could we have thought of being able to magnify our industry in a short time. So much so that the original plan for sizing our industry and our infrastructures to those of a great power spoke of an objective that could be reached in 1949, provided that everything was reinvested year by year. From 1938 onwards, Already the objectives that had been foreseen for 1943 were not feasible. According to the reports that arrived from the Ministry of the Economy in the vicinity of June 1940 to the head of the government, it was already nearly two years behind schedule. While the other nations were already running increasing the quantitative gap and investing from five to ten times more in the scientific field than Italy perhaps could have done in 1943.